Welcome to London. As you can see from the title of this video, today we're going to be exploring the best of London in the rain. After all, just because it's raining outside doesn't mean that you have to have a bad time. London sees around 106 rainy days per year, which may surprise you because that's fewer rainy days in Sydney, Mexico City, New York, and even Miami. However, as these rainy days are distributed fairly evenly throughout the year, you're pretty likely to come across one rainy day during your trip. So without further ado, let's get into the best rainy day activities in London. There are around 162 markets in London, and many of these are covered, making them perfect to visit during a rainy day. We're currently walking through the city of London, away from the River Thames towards Spitalfields, which is one of the only covered markets in London that's open every single day of the week. The market is just a few minutes walk away from Liverpool station, meaning that it's really easy to reach. There's been a market here since the 17th century, and today you can find all kinds of wares for sale, including clothing, souvenirs, and especially lots of food. On its busiest days, Fittlefields has over 100 stalls, and a few dozen of these are dedicated solely to food. Some are pretty famous, such as Humble Crumble, but I particularly love the lunch deal at Yum Bun. I also really love this shop in Spitalfields where you can buy cards, prints, candles, and other special gifts. For an extra special souvenir, you can even get your photo taken at this photo booth. Spitalfields Market isn't the only market that's open every day of the week. This is Leadenhall Market and it dates all the way back to the 14th century, though most of what you see today was constructed during Victorian times. It's mostly a range of cafes and bars here, though there are a few shops. Movie fans will also recognise this spot as it was used as a filming location for the Leaky Cauldron in the first Harry Potter film. We've just arrived at Mercato Mayfair, which is a food court in a former church. The idea is that you can order whatever you want from one of the vendors inside, take it to your table and enjoy food and drinks with your friends. Once inside, you'll find a plant shop followed by three levels of food vendors. I love that lots of small details of the former church dedicated to St. Mark have been preserved, such as the stained glass windows and ornate carvings, among other details. If you head down to the basement, then the crypt has been transformed into a bar and even a brewery. The upper two levels function as the food court, and I love all of the little areas where you can enjoy food and drinks in such an ornate setting. London has no shortage of amazing bookshops, but the most famous chain is probably Waterstones. Waterstones can be found all over the UK, and there are around 300 branches in operation today. Waterstones also owns Hatchards, steps away from the Piccadilly Arcade, and streets away from the ever so famous Burlington Arcade, where beadles still patrol the passageway in top hats and frock coats. Hatchards professes to be not only one of the oldest bookstores in London, but also the oldest bookseller in the entirety of the UK. Dating all the way back to the 18th century, the story of Hatchards began with John Hatchard in 1797. Today, you can still peruse the shelves at your leisure and even buy a book to bring home as a souvenir. As well as some of the larger brands you've seen here, there are also a number of small independent bookshops scattered across London. One of my personal favourites is Word on the Water, which is the UK's first and only so far floating book barge. You actually get onto the boat to browse the different books available. As you can imagine, from one of the most important cities in Europe, there's also no shortage of shopping opportunities available. Firstly, there's a number of major department stores where you can buy pretty much everything imaginable. Some of the most famous are Selfridges, Liberty of London, and John Lewis, which is more of a chain scattered across the UK. There are also a number of really small independent boutiques selling everything from jewellery to CDs to vintage clothing and everything, basically. If you want to go to one particular area, then I really recommend recommend heading to Covent Garden. It's a really lovely area full of little shops, cafes and boutiques. Even though it's been raining all day, the good thing about London weather is that the rain often doesn't last the entirety of the day. As you can see, it's now kind of sunny and we're in for a beautiful sunset. A lot of the shopping centres and covered markets here are pretty regal and we're about to go into the Royal Exchange. If you can hear anything in the background, it's actually the noise of the wind. The most popular thing to do here is go for a tea at Fortnum & Mason's, an afternoon tea, but there are a few other luxury shops in the complex. The next place we're visiting is a bit of a hidden gem and it's completely free to visit. 
We've just arrived at the Barbican Centre and we're going to the conservatory, which is an indoor garden. Unfortunately, the times on Google are actually wrong, so you can only visit on Friday and Sundays. Be sure to book your tickets in advance. But there is also a theatre here, a cafe, and some temporary small exhibitions that are free. There's also an art gallery. The two most famous covered arcades are the 19th century Burlington Arcade and the 20th century Piccadilly Arcade. They're both filled with luxury shopping opportunities and are free to walk down. Of course, one of the main pillars of UK culture, specifically food culture, are all of the amazing pubs. There's actually over 3,500 pubs in London, meaning that you could probably visit one every day for almost 10 years and still end up discovering new ones each day. When it comes to deciding which pub to visit, they're definitely not all made equally, and some certainly have more history and more food and drink than others. If you want to decide whether the pub that you're about to go to is good or not, I do recommend looking at online reviews in advance, just to check that it's definitely got, you know, good food, good drinks, good vibes. One of the easiest ways to duck indoors when it's raining is to go for some food or to a cafe. London has a staggering 15,000 restaurants, including over 70 which have Michelin star status. There's literally something for every taste and budget when it comes to eating out in the big smoke. There are around 40 free museums in London, as well as numerous paid ones, and so there's no shortage of things to do and see, even for the most discerning of travellers. Some of the most famous are the British Museum in Bloomsbury, the Natural History Museum, where you can find a number of dinosaur exhibits, the Victorian Albert Museum, which is home to textile and decorative art collections, and also the Science Museum, which is perfect to visit with kids. One of the more off the beaten path places is near Hoban, and that's a Sir John own museum. He was an architect in the 18th century and you will not believe the amount of things he managed to cram into his house. And if you've made it all the way to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more travel movies. See you next time!